Okay, so this is the unit we're here to work on. The breaker downstairs, I'm going to guess is trip. This is on right now, we gotta shut this off. The breaker downstairs, I'm gonna guess is trip just because of the history of this unit. Now, over the last year, as far as I know, the breaker has tripped two times on this particular machine. It was reset, things were checked with a meter, and everything was running, everything was going good, and that was that. We're tripped again, so what I'm gonna do this time is gonna pull out my Subco M500 Banger. This thing is gonna find the issue 100%. Get rid of it once and for all. I have the Megger set up and I've had to use alligator clips to extend the clips here. Now this panel here is coming back and forth at me because of the wind, but the clips or the wiring with the alligator clips with the Megger itself aren't that long, so I've just added extensions and I've gone to first leg of power here from the bottom side and then to ground. And if we hit the switch or the button, bad, okay? Now, if I go on all three, all three are bad. All three are showing bad, okay? So that tells me something on the line side here is causing the issue. It can't be a compressor or a fan because the contactors aren't pulled in and they're on the load side, all right? So it's gotta be something on the line side somewhere that's causing this issue, so we gotta track it down. So one thing I just wanted to explain quickly is that you gotta make sure that if you're putting your extensions on, you cover them with tape or make sure that they're not touching ground because that could affect your readings. But what I did here is I pulled the line side wiring out of all the contactors. And for some reason, I pulled this one out last. And I was getting the red or the bad signal until I pulled these wires out and checked again up here and then we were good. So, but if you look behind, this contactor also has some other wiring on the line side. We have to figure out what that is and where it goes and I'm also gonna check this wiring as well with the Megger. So if we come back here and we check it, Now this one is saying it's good, but this one here over on this side, I was having kind of a different, see we're almost, we're in that caution zone and you can see that it was in the, the 40 meg ohm area there for a second. So we're getting some caution here, which is not usually that big of a deal, but in this case, we are having a trip breaker intermittently so this could be this one's kind of dancing around as well but let me show you with all these wires disconnected what happens up here so now we're connected to the line side at the the main power block again and we come down here and we check and we are in the good range okay so with all this wiring disconnected we are good, and like I said, I've traced it to this caution over here, so we're gonna check to see what that is. All right, so I started to put wires back on, okay, onto each contactor and, and leaving the wires off of this one, but then as I'm hooking them up, I'm seeing that I'm getting that bad reading again, and the only one that's not continuously giving me the bad reading is the blower contactor even though it needs to be changed anyway because it has some corrosion going on on it now every single contactor that is giving me grief every single one has line voltage at the back tied in to a crankcase heater so what I'm gonna do these crankcase heaters fail all the time I'm gonna disconnect the crankcase heater wiring and check everything again Okay, all the wires have been put back into place except for the crank case heater wires, which are just kind of hanging out back there. We'll deal with them after. 
but I have been checking one by one and we're doing a lot better so here we go on the first leg we hit the button here and we're borderlining caution and good which I'm okay with okay 100 meg ohms I'm okay with that because we're not in that bad range anymore next one up we're going to check again same result and then finally the next one it's on there same result again so I'm okay with that I'm gonna leave these crank case heaters disconnected speak to the customer see what they want to do about this and just be cautious of the dust on these contactors like I said this one's gonna get replaced 100% probably today right now and the rest of these are starting to accumulate a little bit of dust now you got to be careful of that because if the moisture starts to embed itself if it's raining if it's humid outside it embeds itself in that dust that moisture can create a path across phases or to ground which I've talked about many times before carbon tracking or dust tracking anyway guys that is that is the call we figured out the problem now we just have to come up with a solution going forward but I can safely run this unit without a crankcase heater today I'm okay with that they're scroll compressors they can take a bit of a beating not that big of a deal and then we'll talk to the customer about replacing them in the future that's it guys happy HVACing